Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back once again to another Fallout 4 settlement build. Today we're going to be checking out another raider themed home, and this one just so happens to belong to the pack. With that out of the way though, hopefully you guys enjoy the build, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get a better look. So for those who have maybe been following this build series for a while now, this is actually going to be the fourth and final raider home we do, at least for a good long while. And what's cool with building is that the further along you get, the easier things are, because at this point in time it's more about filling things in rather than just building a bunch of new spaces up. Although at the same time, I'd have to say that is sort of bittersweet, because it feels like the more work you end up putting into these settlements, the more and more it starts to lag, which is really not what you want in the end. But anyways, for those of you who might be new to the series, this big building we're looking at right now is actually our apartment complex. And each floor is sort of themed to a different raider gang. I believe the top floor is the trappers, the first floor is the generic commonwealth raiders, the second floor belongs to the operators, and today we're going to be on the third floor, like I said earlier, checking out a home that belongs to the pack. And so to get all the way up there, we'll have to take the handy elevator up. Definitely not that long of a ride, but you can still tell this is a rather tall building. And like usual, I've decorated up the outside of the build as well, though I've sort of held off on doing too much, just because like last time, I'm not 100% sure what the building next to this is going to be, hence the open doorway there. And you'll notice, even though I haven't really admired using plants, especially in builds like these, I figured since the pack is more of a jungly themed gang, they would actually fit in rather well. And same goes for other things like the flamingos. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and make our way inside. It's pretty much the exact same size as all of the other raider homes we've looked at. But I think you'll realize right off the bat, it's, without a doubt, a hell of a lot more colorful. And for good reason, too. I mean, if you just look at the pack armor in the back, that's easily one of the most colorful armor sets you'll find in all of Fallout. For starters, though, I guess we'll go ahead and check out the balcony, and then just kind of work our way around. And so for this build, I figured, at least in my opinion, the pack seem like a gang that likes to party. So I thought it would be for the best to give them plenty of space and plenty of seats so they could accommodate for a large amount of other raiders that may end up stopping by. And that's also why out here we have a grill, so they could cook up a big old meal that would feed at least a few people other than just the homeowner. Also in this area is a little dry bar, some more colorful decorations that once again I think fit the pack theme. Uh, so we have things like the movie poster, the oddly creepy mannequin with uh, some very weird animal body parts on it, and there's actually a few of those all over the build. And once again, to kind of feed all the guests that may stop by, we also have a open fridge. And then moving inside to, I guess what I would call the kitchen area, or dining room maybe, we've got a nice table with some colorful food, and also some more pack themed decorations up on the wall. And I know it kind of sucks seeing the uh, normal dog up there, but I just had to. I mean, let's face it, the uh, pack is probably the craziest gang out there. So I don't think killing a sweet little dog like that is beyond them. Moving even further along though are some more colorful decorations that also help sort of break the build up. And those include, once again, things like the flamingos, and also this time around, some curtains. And then obviously behind those is the homeowner's bedroom. And one of my favorite details in here would have to be the vault tech suitcase. Which I think kind of goes to show that maybe whoever lives here traveled all the way to Vault 88 to steal that thing. Or you know what, now that I think about it, we're in a vault right now, so he could have just gotten it here, but Personally, I think the Vault 88 thing has a bit more history behind it, and also fits the theme that these guys are raiders after all. 
Next up are some details you may have saw the second we walked in. And those include some armor. And I believe every piece on here aside from the helmet used to belong to Maxon. And if you saw my Nuka World playthrough, you might be thinking, I could have sworn you sided with him. How on earth did you acquire his armor? Well, let's just say one day I got a bit bored and kind of massacred everyone there. You know, I'd like to think I did it because I felt bad for Preston, but uh, let's face it, it was really just boredom. But anyways, aside from that, we also have some very colorful pack weapons. And then last, but certainly not least, we have the living room. This may be one of the most decorated areas throughout the whole build. And it includes everything from comic books to some more mounted creatures up on the wall. And also on the couch. And I gotta say, it's kind of weird how it worked out, but for some reason I find myself using the settlement pieces from the more story-driven DLC a hell of a lot more than I do the pieces from the settlement-designated DLC. Which I guarantee is not how Bethesda wanted that to work out, but for someone like me, I guess I never really enjoyed things like the contraptions or even the arena type stuff. Although, since this is a raider city, I really want to do get an arena in here at least eventually. But yeah guys, I think it's safe to say that should end up doing it for today. So hopefully you did end up enjoying the build. And like I mentioned much earlier, this is our last raider home we're going to be doing for a while. So if you've got any ideas for future builds, I would love to hear those. I think I said this earlier, but the town is without a doubt more than halfway done now. And honestly, I know we could keep expanding this thing for as long as we wanted, because this cave system really is gigantic, to say the least. But when it comes to uploading these builds to the Nexus, the one thing I always try and do beforehand is leave a nice big area for you guys to expand and build your own things in, just to make your settlement unique from anyone else who may have downloaded it. So that's why for now I don't really plan on expanding this settlement, Though, if I were to, I do have at least a couple ideas. Though, I think I'll go ahead and save those for the next episode. Since we'll be down in that area. But I'd rather not spoil that, so... Like I said, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy the build. And, as always, I will see you in the next one.